Okay, so today we will be discussing the ballistic pendulum. This is the ballistic uh, pendulum's apparatus here. I show you here. And this is the steel ball is loaded. Uh, this steel mass M is loaded here. And I'm gonna launch uh, the steel ball. And then this launcher, uh, as long as the steel ball is launched, so it will be captured by this uh, ballistic pendulum and it's gonna swing by. And that will be given by uh, by the angle here, so we need to set up this and the initial uh, angle is zero and then it's going to move and we can measure the angle. So let me show you. All right. So with this angle uh, and then with the, the mass of the ballistic pendulum and then mass of the steel ball and the length of the ballistic pendulum to the all the way to the center of mass system, uh, we can estimate the, the initial velocity of the, of the bullet. Uh, of the, the steel ball. So that initial velocity also can be measured uh, by putting two photogate timer with the photogates very very close and then by launching the time taken from uh, passing from one gate to another one uh, give us the time and then delta x over delta t would be the velocity of the, uh, of the steel ball. So by, by confirming this uh, we, can, we can test the conservation of linear momentum and the conservation of energy. So let me uh, discuss this theoretical aspect, so how it, it works. So this is the, uh, the ballistic pendulum apparatus again. So uh, this is something you're going to see in the first phase of the PASCO lab manual. Uh, this is the picture. This is the ballistic pendulum, you can see. So now, the theoretical explanation I'm going to show you. So this is the bullet, the mass of the steel ball or whatever type of ball we use. And this, uh, this is represented by the, the, uh, the small m. And then v naught is the initial velocity of this bullet. Remember, this ballistic pendulum is not moving in the beginning, so its velocity should be zero. So when we launch, this ball will be captured by this ballistic pendulum and it's going to swing by. Uh, and then it's going to move. Uh, with this angle theta, like I showed you before. So now, uh, what's the height it, it, it went up can be measured. This is the length from, the, uh, from here to the center of mass. This is the length. And this is the same length here, the string bag. And then using the trigonometry theta, so it's going to be L, and this is theta, this is going to be L cosine theta up to here. So, so total is L. And from here to here is L cosine theta, so the height should be L minus L cosine theta. So that's if you, you factor out L, L1 minus cosine theta. That is the height. So we have to uh, express everything in terms of the, the quantity that we can measure. Uh, so the height we are not measuring here, so we have to express the height in terms of this length and this angle theta So in this experiment. So the mass of the steel ball, V0 is the initial velocity of the steel ball. In the part one, what happens in the part one is this steel ball is moving with the velocity and then it's captured by this uh, pendulum and they move together so with the same common velocity, final velocity. So the, how the principle of conservation of linear momentum the momentum of this ball in, uh, and the mass uh, this um, um, pendulum system in the beginning is uh, this m v naught plus a big m which is uh, the mass of the pendulum times zero because it's not moving. That's the initial momentum, total momentum. The final momentum, these two things combine and then they, it is captured here. So m plus m would be the mass and then with her, they move with the common velocity in the F. So, so if, uh, you, if you simplify, this is zero, so M V is not equals to M plus M V F. Remember, this M is the mass of the steel ball, and this big M is the mass of this pendulum. So this is the first part, the conservation of linear momentum. In the second part, what happens is the energy conservation. So let me show you here. So when this, uh, this uh, the, the, 
the block and the, the mass system is moving here. So in the beginning, they have some kinetic energy. And at maximum height, uh, they are not moving anymore. So their kinetic energy is zero. And then everything turned into the potential energy because of the height. So the kinetic energy here is supposed to be equal to the potential energy here. So uh, in the uh, in these um, conservation of energy, so normally we use uh, this uh, in um, isolated system. Change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy should be equal to zero. So change in kinetic energy of this uh, uh, block and the uh, and the ball system. So finally, they stop, so it's zero. Initially, they have some common velocity. One half mass V squared is the, the initial kinetic energy. And the final potential energy should be mass times gravity, uh, accident due to gravity times final height, minus mass times uh, accident due to gravity times initial height. That's supposed to be equal to zero. And then when you simplify, uh, you get a, a uh, so you can factor out m plus mg here and then h f minus h i equals to zero. Then you're gonna move this to the right. So when you push this to the right, so I put a, a difference of final height minus initial height is just height. And then this is a negative m plus mg h on both sides. That gives me uh, this expression and I multiply by two over m plus m with negative sign and then that takes care and then of this and final velocity square is 2gh and then you have to simplify the square root of 2gh why i'm interested in final velocity because you can see in the first part i'm very interested the initial velocity of the the bullet or the steel bomb so to get that you might have to divide by m but you need the expression of final velocity and that final velocity here. Or if you feel like a, uh, overwhelming, you can simply uh, use this alternative, you can use this uh, lesson. Kinetic energy, initial kinetic energy of the pendulum ball systems must be equal to the potential energy of the pendulum ball system at the maximum height, so by the conservation of energy. And then the initial kinetic energy of the, uh, the pendulum ball system is one half m plus mv squared. Vf squared, and that's supposed to be equal to the m plus m g times h. And then by the same way, you can just multiply 2 over m plus m, and 2 over m plus m, you got the final is e square root of 2gh. Now, so you have the, the v final expression in, in terms of uh, the height, and then we already got the height, you can see the height is L times 1 minus cosine theta. So when you plug that value in height over here, you can see, so um, velocity of the bullet, I keep saying bullet for the steel ball. I mean, that's what we do in the, in the theoretical lectures, that we have a bullet block system, we solve the problem. So B, uh, 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 initial velocity of the, the ball is m plus m over m vf, and we substitute vf as 2gh, and then 2 times gh is uh, substituted by l on minus cosine theta. That's how you can calculate the initial velocity of the ball. So again, I'm going to repeat, this is initial velocity of the ball, m is mass of the ball, and then uh, uppercase m is mass of the pendulum, and then m plus m would be the combined mass of the pendulum of the ball. Remember, the m plus m is the combined mass of the pendulum of the ball, and l is the distance from the pivot point to the center of mass of the pendulum ball system. So this is how we got uh, the initial velocity of the ball. That's going to be the result part A, some meter per second. How do we know this is true? Uh, you need to have some comparison. Uh, and then uh, to compare this, uh, you could use the photogate timer, and then in the photogate timer, so change in x over change in t is the velocity, and uh, this change in x would be uh, the how far two photogates are are placed, the difference of the distance between two photogates, 
go here and time go here and you divide and that's the meter per second you can get the percentage difference between these two uh, how, um, how how uh, you, you compare on these two different parts so this is part A and that's going to be part B and after you're done and just follow the instruction of the, the lab manual given by PASCO and prepare the lab report